The Pseudo-Isidorian Decretals or false decretals are a set of extensive, influential medieval forgeries written by a scholar or group of scholars known as Pseudo-Isidore. The authors, using the pseudonym of Isidore Mercator, were probably a group of Frankish clerics writing in the second quarter of the 9th century. To defend the position of bishops against metropolitans and secular authorities, they created documents purportedly authored by early popes and council documents. Historical background The Carolingian Empire in the second quarter of the 9th century set the stage for the forgers. Although Louis I the Pious was deposed by his sons in the early 830s, he soon regained the throne. Archbishops and bishops played important roles, imposing penance on Louis for his allegedly sinful life and paving the way for his removal. When Louis regained the throne, some church dignitaries were stripped of their bishoprics and exiled. Topic. Content Topic. The pseudo-Isidorian decretals and fictitious letters from Clement to Gregory the Great were incorporated in a 9th-century collection of canons purportedly by the pseudonymous Isidore Mercator. Collections of canons were commonly made by adding new matter to old. The forgers of the Pseudo Isidore collection took as the basis of their work the Hispania Gallica Augustodonensis, interpolating their forgeries with the genuine material to provide credibility by association. The Liber Pontificalis was used as a historical guide and furnished some subject matter. The Pseudo Isidorian collection includes an earlier non -pseudo -Isidorian forgery, the donation of Constantine. The principal texts are the addition of forged material to an earlier, authentic Spanish collection with texts from councils and papal letters from the 4th through the 8th centuries. The Hispania Gallica Augustodonensis name derives from a manuscript once in the French city of Autun Latin Augustodunum. A collection of falsified legislation by Frankish rulers capitularies, allegedly from the 6th to the 9th centuries, the Capitularia Benedicti Leviti, named for the alleged author of the collection's introduction, Deacon Latin Levita Benedictus. The author alleges that he has completed and updated the collection by the abbot Ansigasis of Fontenelle died around 833. A brief collection on criminal procedure, the Capitula Angelramni, allegedly given to Bishop Angelram of Metz by Pope Hadrian I. A collection of about 100 forged papal letters, most allegedly written by Roman bishops during the first three centuries AD. In its preface, the author calls himself Bishop Isidorus Mercator, hence the name of the complex. In addition to the forged letters, the collection has a large number of genuine and partially falsified council texts and papal letters from the 4th to the 8th centuries. The authentic interpolated material derives predominantly from the Hispania Gallica Augustodonensis. In addition to these four main pieces are other minor forgeries from the same workshop. The Excerptiones de Gestis Chalcedonensis Concilii some falsifications in the Hamilton 132 manuscript in the Berlin State Library The Collectio Danieliana Topic. Authorship Topic. Much of the work is attributed to Isidore Mercator, but this is almost certainly a pseudonym created by conflating the names of the respected ecclesiastical scholars Isidore of Seville and Marius Mercator. The work probably originated in the Kingdom of the Franks. The forger's main object was to emancipate bishops from secular power and the influence of archbishops and synods, partially by exalting papal supremacy. The author of one section identifies himself as Benedictus Levita, Benedict the Levite, or the deacon. His Capitularia Benedicti Leviti deal not with early church and papal letters as the others do, but with forged capitularies on religious and theological matters by Carolingian rulers most notably Charlemagne who provide the forger's alleged authority. It is still unknown if the differently structured and written Capitularia Benedicti Leviti slightly predated and inspired the authors of the false decretals or all were forged simultaneously. The overall work was probably done by several authors under the editorial control of a learned man. Although certain identification of the compilers and forgers is probably impossible, Klaus Zechiel X has demonstrated that they used manuscripts from the monastic library at Corby. 
Zekiel X has compiled evidence that an abbot at Corby, Pascasius Radbertus abbot 842-847 might have been one of those responsible for the forgeries. The forgers probably worked in the ecclesiastical province of Reims, and the complex was mostly complete by 847 to 852. The earliest known reference to the text was in 852. Its chief composer may have been ordained illegally by Ebo, Archbishop of Reims, during his brief and unlawful reinstatement, 840 to 41. Whereas Zekiel X has argued for a date of composition in the 830s or early 840s based on evidence centering on the Council of Thionville, Eric Nibs has recently argued for a later composition date in the 840s or early 850s, on the basis of language in the decretals which appear targeted to support Ebo after his translation to the bishopric at Hildesheim in 845. Topic manuscripts Topic 75 manuscripts of pseudo-Isidorian material, differing widely from each other, have survived. The manuscripts have been traditionally divided into six or seven groups. Most comprehensive is the manuscript known as A1 by Hincius, with the mid-9th century Vaticanus Latinus Odebonianus 93 its best representative. Equally important is Class A, B the original manuscript of this class Ms. 442, written after 858 was preserved in the Beinach Rare Book and Manuscript Library of the Yale University Library. A. B is best represented by Vaticanus Latinus 630 last quarter of the 9th century, from the Corby Scriptorium, and the Cluny version also dates to the mid-9th century. Class A2 dates to the 9th century as well. Outstanding examples of this class include the Ivrea Bibliotheca Capitolare 83 from northern Italy and the Bibliotheca Vallicelliana d.38 in Rome, from the ecclesiastical province of Reims. Three more versions date from the 11th or 12th century, Hincius Class B e.g., Boulogne sur Mer, Bibliotheque Municipale 115-116, Hincius Class C e.g., Montpellier Bibliotheque de l'École de Médecine H.3, a version mixing A2 and the Cluny version e.g., Paris Bibliotheque Nationale Lot. 5141 Which manuscript class is the genuine forgery is difficult to determine. The 9th century composition of A1, A, B, the Cluny version and A2 may indicate that the forgers originally circulated their work in several different versions to evade detection. Topic editions Topic Efforts to publish the forgeries have been unsuccessful, with the Hispania Gallica Augustodonensis never published. Although several editions of the Capitularia Benedicti Leviti exist, the most recent Monumenta Germania Historica, Leges, Folio 2, 2, 1831 is scholastically inferior to the 1677 Etienne Belouze edition. The false decretals and the Capitula Angelramni have been published twice, with the 1863 edition by Paul Hincius criticized for his choice of manuscripts. Hincius also printed the genuine and interpolated parts of the collection by reprinting older versions of Pseudo Isidore's genuine sources, making that portion of his edition critically unusable. Historians must return to J. Merlin's 1525 edition, based on a single 13th century manuscript and reprinted in volume 130 of Jacques Paul Migna's Petrologia Latina. Influence Topic. For 150 to 200 years, the forgeries were only moderately successful. Although a relatively large number of 9th or 10th century manuscripts is known about 100 more or less complete manuscripts of the false decretals, dating from the 9th to the 16th century, have been preserved, the canonical collections took little notice of the false decretals until the early 11th century. During that century, the situation changed rapidly under the impetus of the Gregorian reforms and the investiture controversy. Spurred by monastic reform movements and the efforts of some Holy Roman emperors, a group of cardinals and a series of popes strove to cleanse the Church of abuses and free the papacy from its imperial patronage which had recently freed it from the influence of Roman nobles. The reformers Efforts soon conflicted with temporal power. The bishops of the Holy Roman Empire were crucial to the emperors power, forming the backbone of their administrative structure. This mingling of spiritual and temporal power was wrong. According to the reformers, St. Peter had condemned Simon Magus the Simon of Simony, who tried to buy spiritual power. The alleged letters, allegedly from some of the most venerable Roman bishops, demonstrated that the emperor's practice contradicted the oldest traditions of the church. 
Collections of canon law rediscovered the false decretals, since some were largely extracts of the forgeries. The texts were now used to increase scrutiny of the bishops, making them dependent on the pope. This situation prevailed until around 1140, when the jurist Gratian published his Concordia Discordantium Canonum increasingly replacing the older collections and soon regarded as authoritative. Although Gratian also indirectly used forged texts, his work ended the immediate influence of the false decretals. The texts had become a basis for procedural law, but the bishop's independence was increasingly restricted by the Church of Rome. During the Middle Ages, few doubted the authenticity of the alleged papal letters. This changed during the 15th century, when humanist Latin scholars such as Cardinal Nicholas of Cusa noticed bizarre anachronisms such as the claim that Clement I had based the preeminence of local churches on the presence of pagan high priests. During the 16th century, Protestant ecclesiastical historians such as the Centuriators of Magdeburg the authors of the Magdeburg Centuries systematically criticized the forgeries without yet recognizing them as an interconnected complex. The final proof was provided by Calvinist preacher David Blondel, who discovered that the popes from the early centuries quoted extensively from much later authors and published his findings in 1628. Although Catholic theologians originally tried to defend the authenticity of at least some of the material, since the 19th century no serious theologian or historian has denied them as forgeries. References Further reading Furman, H. Einflu und Verbreitung der Pseudoisidorischen Falschungen. Schriften der Monumenta Germania Historica 24, i.e. Fournier, P., Le Bras, G. Histoire des Collections Canoniques and Occident. Volumes I. II. Salte, L. False Decretals. The Catholic Encyclopedia. New York, Robert Appleton Company. Boudignon, Auguste. Decretals. In Chisholm, Hugh. Encyclopædia Britannica, 7. 11th ed. Cambridge University Press. pp. 915-917. External links Project Pseudoisidor Older online edition in progress of the false decretals, now discontinued, Monumenta Germania Historica, in German in Latin. The false capitularies of Benedictus Levita, Monumenta Germania Historica, in German in Latin. Opera Omnia, by Migni Patrologia Latina, with analytical indexes. In Latin Pseudo Isidore, an edition in progress of the false decretals.